Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, cut a mat for a piece of art. The art that I've chosen today is one of my originals. Um, this is a, well, it's a print of one of my originals, rather, that I've done custom watercolor on. I have a pre-cut 11 by 14 acid-free mat board, white sides on both sides, and then my Logan tabletop cutter uh, with a rail and then a bevel cutter. This cuts a bevel in it so your window will show um, the bevel. A lot of people really like that because of the depth the mat can add to it. Um, it is marked with a stopping guide here um, so once you mark out your mat board um, this will tell you when you need to stop. So I'm going to start first by measuring my picture to find out how big my window needs to be and what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna measure and maximize the picture I'm not gonna bring it in any farther I'm gonna go as close to the edge as I can without the picture falling through so I have an 11 inch tall piece of paper I'm gonna come in about an eighth um, to about a quarter of an inch. I'm actually just going to make this window ten and a half, which would be coming in a quarter inch on the top and bottom. This one I'm probably just going to bring this into eight. This will make it really easy, so we'll do it. Window ten and a half inches by eight inches. So the easiest way is you take your mat board, you uh, figure out which side is going to be the back, once I have found my back, I'm going to measure. And so we know that the window opening, or that the uh, size of the mat board is 11 inches. So then I subtract my 8 inches, and I'm left with 3. Half of 3 is 1.5, so I'm going to come in 1.5 inches from each side, and I'm going to draw my straight line. So I have a pencil here, I'm going to mark it off. Measure an inch and a half. Do a mark here. Measure an inch and a half on this side. I'm going to flip it over. Measure an inch and a half here. And again, an inch and a half here. Now I'm going to draw a straight line all the way across it. Now I don't normally do it like this all the time. I've done this for many years, so I've learned where I need to mark my lines, but for the sake of um, showing how it's done and how I learned, I'm just gonna draw a line all the way through it. And I know you can't see all of this. This isn't completely in frame, but you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. Now it's 14 inches tall. My window opening is going to be ten and a half, so that would be three and a half inches, and we're going to divide that by two, so that would be an inch and three quarters. So I'm going to measure an inch and three quarters here. And you can see. When I hold my art up here, my mark is right here and right here. So my art is not going to fall through the window opening. Flip it around, measure an inch and three quarters again. Then again, draw my lines. So at the end of this, I'm going to have a square, or a rectangle rather, drawn on the back of the mat board. And these will be my guidelines. So I know how to adjust my rail, um, and my stopper rail, and how I, um, that's how I'm going to know when to stop with my bevel cutter. So these ones, the Logan um, mat, tabletop mat cutter, 
has this. You just loosen the two pieces here. I'm going to take this out quick. And then you slide this. Mine's really old. A lot of the equipment you're going to see me using, I've had for many years. I've been doing this for a lot of long time. So a lot of my stuff is loved. As soon as I line up my marks in here for my stopping guide, find out where I'm going to be comfortable cutting it. Then I'm going to lock this down in place. Lock the other one down in place. Make sure I've given myself adequate room and cleared the area around the cutter. I'm going to take my bevel cutter with the blade still um, retracted inside of it and I'm going to line it up with my, you got this marking um, guide on the back here. I'm going to line it up with my pencil line. I'm going to hold it very stir or steadily, very firmly, and I'm going to push the blade down into the, vi into the mat board. While pressing down with this hand here, I'm going to pull as evenly as and as steadily as I can down to my stopping point down here. So I've stopped here, pull the blade back in, now I can pull it out. Now you'll see that I have another piece of spare mat right here. Um, what this mat underneath it does is keeps the um, mat that you're cutting from tearing. So you can buy full size mat boards at Hobby Lobby if you don't have a Hobby Lobby. I honestly don't know any other stores that carry them. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. The opposite side here, I just did this side over here. This side is going to be the same width because I'm doing an even mat on the sides and there we go. And I stop here, retract the blade. Okay, now I have to adjust the rail because this is an inch and three quarters where this was an inch and a half. So I'm going to unscrew these again. Put my mat board in here and I'll adjust this. And we'll stop here. Make sure my mat is all the way to the rail here. Put my bevel cutter on the rail. Line it up with my marking point. Push the blade in. Pull it as smoothly across as you can. Now we've got three sides cut. Now all we need is the last side cut. Now if you're doing it right, this should be loose. And if you've marked your spots right and haven't gone past your marking lines, there shouldn't be a lot of tell on the front as far as um, cuts. So we're almost done here. As soon as this cut is done, this should fall through and detach and leave a window opening. Push my blade in, pull it across, stop at the line, pull it out. Now when I lift this up, this should this piece in the center should fall right through, leaving me with my mat. I'll flip it around. Now you can see here, this is my excess piece. I usually keep these and I do little pieces of art on them. It's acid free, so they're kind of fun to do art or drawings on or paint or whatever. Now I've got my mat board and my art. Now the easiest way to do this is if you have acid-free art tape, you're going to, you can either do a whole strip across the top or you can do a couple um, spots like one here, one here, just across the top, nothing on the sides or the bottom. Um, if you do put tape on the sides or on the bottom to try to um, keep it in there, what you're going to see happen over the years is that paper is going to start to pucker and ripple a little bit. Um, the way paper acts with humidity 
and changing temperature is that'll create a lot of pressure on the paper and it's not going to give it a lot of room to move so putting one piece of tape or a couple just at the top is going to allow this to hang freely in here and that's going to be ultimately best for your art so this is archival matting of pictures I have acid free art board or mat board this is going to prevent the art from yellowing or fading it's going to prevent acid burn around the edges and then um, hinging at the top with acid free art tape um, I usually get an acid free uh, foam core backer to put behind your art and then it's ready to pop into a frame I did cut this at a standard size and that just makes framing a lot easier you don't have to buy custom framing and it's just altogether easier to do so I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this